Good afternoon, Mount Peace members, visitors, and friends. Welcome to our Noonday Bible Study. We have our Noonday Bible Study on Wednesdays at noon. We are about to enter into another wonderful Sunday. This coming Sunday will be Palm Sunday. I know that many of us watch the uh, calendar, the Christian calendar, and so we know what's coming up. Yes, we get to experience another Palm Sunday. And so on this afternoon, I want us to focus on the power of Palm Sunday. All right, the power of Palm Sunday. We're going to look at Matthew's gospel, Matthew 21, and we're going to look at verses 1 to 11. Now, while you're looking for that, Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11, I want to remind us about Palm Sunday. We know that it is a Christian holiday, and it occurs the Sunday before Easter. So that means that the Lenten season is almost over. So I know that many of us have been really sticking to our Lenten sacrifices. And so anyway, Easter is on the way, but not before Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is that celebration that really commemorates Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And it's mentioned in each of the four Gospels. But again, we're going to look at Matthew, all right? So Jesus enters Jerusalem and Jesus knows that he's going to be tried and crucified, but he enters anyway and he's welcomed. He's welcoming his fate. He's welcoming the fact that he's going to rise from the grave and save us from our sin. So Palm Sunday, it really marks the beginning of Holy Week and really the remembrance of um, this idea of Jesus's earthly ministry coming to an end. So it's really the remembrance of Jesus's last days to the cross. And even in some churches on Palm Sunday, as some churches observe Palm Sunday, the blessing and sharing of palm branches are there and it symbolizes the branches that were placed in front of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, all right? So I'm going to read from the New International Version of Scripture as we focus on the power of Palm Sunday. So it's coming this Sunday and it's going to be another powerful day in the Lord. So Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11, the New International Version, talking about Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. The Bible tells us that as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, okay? saying to them, and sometimes that Beth, Beth page, like I said it that way, but people say it different ways. Some people say uh, Beth, 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 something like that. So you may hear that word um, pronounced differently, but I said Beth page. Um, but anyway, verse two, Jesus said to them as he sent the disciples, he says, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. He gives them instructions. He says, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. So verse four says, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Let me stop there so that we'll know which prophet that is. Because we understand that in our Bible, in the Old Testament, there are minor prophets and major prophets. Well, here, Matthew is speaking of the prophet Zechariah and specifically chapter nine, verse nine. All right. So verse four in Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11 is what we're reading, but verse 4, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Zechariah. What was spoken through the prophet Zechariah? Say to the daughter Zion, let me stop there. The daughter Zion refers to Jerusalem or Jewish people. Okay, so I want to make sure that we're understanding what these, uh, what, what it relates to. All right. As we're reading scripture, really understanding. So say to daughter Zion. So daughter Zion is the Jewish people. Say to the Jewish people, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. See that? All right. So then verse or the fold of the donkey. So verse six says the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed him. 
them to do. Verse 7, they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. So here comes why we're celebrating Palm Sunday in this way. We're celebrating those palms there on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the he highest heaven. Verse 10. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So again, my brothers and sisters, what we're seeing is Jesus entered into Jerusalem and was greeted by people waving palm branches. And we see how those people, they spread them on the road. This is what Sunday is all about, this coming Sunday. This is what Palm Sunday is about. So for Christians... Palm Sunday is a reminder of this story. And again, I shared it from Matthew, but it's in all four Gospels. So it's in all four. So as we're looking at this, we need to understand what we're celebrating. All right. Matthew writes it this way, his account. So for Christians, Palm Sunday, it's a reminder of the welcoming of Jesus into our hearts. And it's a reminder of our willingness to follow Jesus. Let me say this again. So Palm Sunday is about us being reminded that we welcome Jesus into our hearts and also being reminded of our willingness to follow Jesus. So before Palm Sunday gets here on Sunday, on today, our Wednesday noon Bible study, I want us to think about that. I want us to think about our accepting Jesus into our hearts and I want us to think about our willingness to really follow Jesus. So then there are three things that we should reflect on even before Sunday comes and even after Sunday, okay? So when we're thinking about Palm Sunday and we're thinking about welcoming Jesus, that means that when we think about it, we have accepted his way of living. So when we think about reflecting on Palm Sunday, accepting Jesus' way of living is what we're supposed to be doing. It's what we do when we say we're going to follow in the way of Jesus Christ. So then what does that look like in our lives? Accepting his way of living. I want you to think about that for a little bit. What does that mean to you? If you have accepted Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life, what does it mean to accept his way of living? Let's think about that. You may want to share, and if you want to share, that's fine. What does it mean? Accepting Jesus' way of living. Okay, let's see what some people are sharing. Accepting Jesus' way of living. All right, so when we think about accepting Jesus' way of living, let's see. Um, maybe it means, um, think about not long ago in the news. We know that we saw a display of someone not having self-control at the Oscars. Maybe you've read about it or you saw it. Well, if you saw that, then does that seem to be a good example of accepting Jesus' way of living? What would Jesus do? That's really what it means when we think about accepting Jesus' way of living. What would Jesus do? So as I'm living and I'm walking through this world every day, I have to ask myself, what would Jesus do? And not only what would Jesus do, but perhaps I should ask myself, what should it, what wouldn't Jesus do? So then I'll ask myself, what shouldn't I do? So accepting Jesus's way of living is asking ourselves as we walk through life, no matter what people say to us, no matter what people feel about us, no matter what our bank accounts look like, no matter even if our health fails, if I am accepting the way Jesus lived, what does that look like? How do I re reflect Jesus in the way that I live, right? So what would Jesus do? And then what wouldn't Jesus do? 
So that's the first thing as we're reflecting on being reminded that we've welcomed Jesus into our hearts and being reminded of our willingness to follow Jesus. That means that I follow, we follow the way that Jesus lived. And in order to know how Jesus did that, we do like we're doing now. We have Bible studies and we do like we do even when we're not in Bible study and when we're not in the Sunday morning worship experience, we read our Bibles for ourselves. We should be familiar with Matthew, Luke, uh, Mark, and John because they are telling the lived experience of Jesus Christ to the best of their knowledge. The gospel. The gospels is the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if we want to accept the way Jesus lived, then we have to know how Jesus lived. So that's the first thing. Let's think about this further. As we're thinking about this power of Palm Sunday. Well, we also should be reminded that we accepted Jesus' way of loving. So not just Jesus' way of living, but Jesus' way of loving. How are we loving people? And how are we loving ourselves? So then we need to, again, read our Bibles to see the way that Jesus loved. If we even think about the fact that Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. Jesus knew that, right? But Jesus even allowed Judas to sit at the table at the Last Supper. Look at that. Now that is a great display of love. Sometimes when people are difficult to love, we have to think about how Jesus loved. Now we're not going to be Jesus, but we can certainly try to be more like Jesus. Some people are going to be challenging to love. Some people on our jobs, some people in our families, some people even as we're walking through life, you know, they're going to be challenging to love. But that's when we think about the way Jesus did it. So in this power of Palm Sunday, we should be reminded that we have accepted to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, welcome Jesus into our hearts. So then that means that we have accepted Jesus' way of loving. So reflect on your life and think, are you loving like Jesus? All right, so that's the next thing. The last thing I wanted to share with us as we're looking at the way that Jesus lived and we're looking at the power of Palm Sunday, not just having another Palm Sunday experience, but knowing that it can be powerful. The third thing is we have accepted or it has to do with accepting Jesus's way of leading. Jesus's way of leading. So I've given you three L's. Accepted Jesus' way of loving, Jesus' way of living, and Jesus' way of leading, and really leading our lives. Have we really surrendered all to Jesus? Even the way that we allow God to lead? Many of us are leaders in our own right. We may be leaders on our jobs, we're leaders in our family, and that's okay. Then the ultimate leader of our lives should be Jesus Christ. How did Jesus lead? What are some examples of the way that Jesus led in Jesus' earthly ministry? Think about that. You can share if you like. So we've thought about the way Jesus lived, you know, and how we accepted um, Jesus' way of living. We thought about Jesus' way of loving. I gave an example of Judas. But what's an example of the way that Jesus leads? How does Jesus lead? How do we need to accept Jesus leading our lives? Okay. All right. So I'm just giving us time to think some things through. Whether we share or not, sometimes we need just a silent moment to really think these things through, even in Bible study. Okay. All right. So as we're thinking about the power of Palm Sunday... Thank you if you share. Thank you if you even thought about it because we need to think these things through, not just have Bible studies, but really think about how we can apply them. So now as I'm thinking about the power of Palm Sunday, I'm going to pray as we're continuing this Lenten season experience. I'm going to pray, God, help me, you know, to truly accept and live in your way of uh, living the way that you lived when you walked the earth. 
Help me, God, to really accept the way that you love and help me, God, really to accept the way that you lead so that I can really surrender all to you. Not just sing the song. It's a beautiful song. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, that can sound so good. It can feel so good. But have I really done it? by accepting the way that Jesus Christ leads. So I want to pray for us on this afternoon so that we can continue to learn the ways of Jesus Christ, so that we can continue to reflect Jesus Christ, and so that we can really change the world because we are really trying our best to be like Jesus. So let's pray. Let's pray. God, thank you so very much for reminding us of your triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. Thank you, God, for reminding us of how you were greeted by the people waving palm branches and really putting those leaves even on the road. Thank you, God, that we as believers, as Christians, we can be reminded of your welcoming and we can be reminded that it wasn't just into Jerusalem, but it was into our hearts. We can be reminded, God, of our willingness, God, to follow in your way. So I pray, God, that you will touch each of us. I pray that we will accept your way of living. I pray that we will accept your way of loving. And God, I pray that we will accept your way of leading. Let us focus on those three L's, God, so that we can be obedient to you and we'll truly be the light that you have called us to be. Thank you, God, for our church. Thank you for Pastor Terry. Thank you for every member of the Mount Peace Baptist Church. May we continue to learn and grow in your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, Mount Peace visitors, members, and friends, may we go in peace and may we truly, truly be grateful for the power of Palm Sunday. Have a great lunch. Have a great day. God bless you.